Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus and the disciples went on and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples and saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed by human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another, who was the greatest. He sat down and he called the twelve and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them. And taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Thanks. So a lot has happened in the Gospel of Mark between last week's reading and this week's. Last week we had Peter's confession. Jesus asked the disciples who they thought he was. He heard the proclamation. And then Jesus set the tone of God's way in the world, that of sacrifice and service. He told them that he would be rejected, crucified. That's when Peter pulled him aside and rebuked him. And Jesus stared down worldly desire, instructing faith through taking up the cross. Then, soon after that, the transfiguration happens. God shows the followers that Jesus is serious business. And then on the heels of the transfiguration, we have a healing through prayer. And then Jesus talks more about commitment and connection, pushing further into the way of sacrifice and instruction. Here in the middle of the Gospel of Mark, here in this really deep time, Jesus has been laying out the path of the sacred in the eyes of God. What does God see as sacred? Sacred, being set apart, raised up. That's what it means to be sacred. Sacred for the, the way of God is turning away from the path of the world. Turning away from the path of power. Giving over to God in submission. Well, this is where we pick up today with Jesus, reminding this again, telling the disciples again of his sacrifice, his sacred act for the divine and the people, showing that the way of God in the world is a way of sacrifice. Since the glory of the kingdom is open to all believers, sacrifice in the world is perfectly legitimate. Service in this world leading to glory in the next. Because that service stems from a deep and complete commitment to God. Not works for the sake of salvation, but works, sacrifice, and service because salvation has already been revealed. And the disciples respond to their response to Jesus once again laying out the path of the sacred in the world is through sacrifice and service. They respond to it by arguing about earthly power. Who is the greatest? Who is the best? That's a very secular understanding of world order. Those who are the greatest are raised up. Those who are not the greatest are, well, not raised up. Even if they didn't understand or felt fear or were confused, there is no dialogue with Jesus about this understanding of sacred, about how the new sacredness of God is through this path of service, sacrifice. They just desire the second. They desire what's already in the place. And there's actually a hope of Making the secular sacred. Look, they're arguing about earthly power. Jesus is 
setting out the sacred in the world as sacrifice, wouldn't it just be far easier to make what's already in place sacred? Rather than setting a new sacred, wouldn't it just be easier to take what you have and kind of reform it a little bit and make it sacred? Seems much simpler. Right? It's far easier to live into the structure's presence the way things are and have God then make them sacred than to turn from what there is and embrace this whole new Satan. Look, the idea of sacrifice and service is preposterous. It's still preposterous in our world without the intervention of the Holy Spirit. The disciples, the Pharisees, the scribes, they all pressed for this idea of having God just blessing what they're doing. Make sacred the secular since it's already happening and it is far easier. As a matter of fact, believers throughout history have believed. After the resurrection, the disciples, the apostles, you know, they got it for a while. For the first couple hundred years of the church, the early church, they gathered in houses and catacombs that understood themselves as the least going out into the world, risking their lives under the boot of Rome to proselytize and to share and evangelize. They got it. The secular was turned away from, set aside for a far greater thing, even willing to risk their lives. And we have myriads of stories of martyrs, named and unnamed, who gave their lives for the sake of the gospel. They got it. They got the path of the sacred. Until around 325, when Emperor Constantine converted and Christianity became legal and actually became dominant, then all of a sudden Christians didn't need to sacrifice. There wasn't this desire of servitude because they were topped up. The moment that Christianity was acknowledged, all the Roman gods went away. You can't have Christianity in the Roman gods. All the Roman gods went away. But here's the thing, they didn't take their temples with them. So they have a city full of empty temples. To so all of these gods that no longer exist. What do you do with empty temples? You fill them, right? They were filled with Christians. So the Christians took over the empty temples and they made these places of abomination sacred. Look, there's nothing in the, in the New Testament that ever talked about Christians building big buildings, grand cathedrals. Yet when the cathedrals to the dead gods were vacated, the church took them over. In some ways, it's a good use of resources. But in other ways, it also then sacrificed that way of serving. Sacrifice. They took these places of abomination and made them sacred. Power and prestige, authority, greatness then ensued. The Bishop of Rome, whom we know as the Pope, got great And this passed on down through history. You know, we wound up having wars and colonizations and taxes, right? I mean, that's what humans do. We go to war, we colonize, we pay taxes. Maybe not we specifically, but we as a species. So why don't we make those things sacred? Right? Why don't we make our wars and our colonization and our, and our taxes Sacred. That's where indulgence is coming from. We're going to fight. We're going to expand. We're going to pay taxes. Let's just take God and put them on top of that rather than leaning into the sacrifice of Jesus. This is earthly power. This is what the disciples were arguing. Jesus continues to teach the way of service. Sacrifice. The way of following the cross. We are called to give over to God and to follow the way of the cross. That is our call. Worship is meant to be a holy thing. This is meant to be shoes off, different from all other things. Of course, we can worship God always, yes, of course. We can do it anywhere, absolutely, as long as it is set aside and sacred. Worship is meant to be sacred, but we see more and more this secularization of the sacred. As a matter of fact, more and more yeah, secularization of the sacred. Or the sacredization of the sacred. Sorry, I know that's not really a word, but it's, there's really no other way to put it. Take the secular and make it sacred. 
take what we're doing and make it safe. Superimpose God on something that is already happening. We can even find ourselves doing it in our own schedules and our own lives. God's call to follow the cross, what Jesus lays out as sacred in the world, is sacrifice, is to step aside, is to put something different, to give over to God and follow the way of the cross. God's call to sacrifice and give over to the divine. Sacrifice doesn't have to be suffering. Sacrifice doesn't have to be a loss. Sacrifice doesn't have to be less. But that can get lost in the miasma of all the things that inundate us every day. So let's just have God make them sacred. Let's have God make our busyness sacred, our choices sacred, our other sacred. It's just far easier than having to stand in the path of where Jesus goes. Yet when we come to the scriptures, when we come back to Jesus, the one who has done all things for us, who could have done more than we could ever imagine, he shows the road of sacrifice. He shows the road of servant. And he does it by bringing in a workers. Children in the ancient world were workers. They were less than. They didn't have meaning the same way that we give children meaning today. And yet Jesus takes this child and puts it in his lap. You don't know if it's a boy or a girl. Takes the child and puts the child in his lap. And uses this worthless as an understanding of what it means to sacrifice, to live into the sacred, the other. The call of the disciple is to anticipate and accept this path of sacrifice, of raising up the least, of stepping aside from everything else and setting the tone of the sacred. The sacred is different. It does not look like any other. It does not reflect the tenets of any other. That is the call of the disciple. Because the sacred path of God is the true and only path to what we truly desire. Salvation. We cannot get there any other way. But Jesus is present in all things. Jesus is present in all choices. Jesus is present in the other, not just the sacred. There is no doubt about that. That is the promise of our baptism. Yet Jesus does not make the other sacred. Jesus does not, Jesus does not waver from the call to service. Jesus does not acquiesce to the pressure of the second. He never had. Though if he did, it would have saved him from the cross. But he never intended to be saved from the cross. He intended to show the sacred act of service, sacrifice, and submission to God. And he did. And God honored that by raising him from the dead. God asks and expects the same from us. Can we do it like Jesus? No, we cannot. Yet we can strive to live out the sacred. We can strive to embrace the sacred and see the sacred as more important. Sacrifice and servanthood and submission to God. That is the sacred path that Jesus lays out. That is the more beautiful road. And it is through those acts that we show fidelity, commitment, and faith to God. And it is through that fidelity, faith, and commitment to God that we see the gates of eternity.